Yeah? yeah? Right? Yes. Deal? Boing. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. There's a module for that? There, of course there is. We are trying out a new trick on the Acquia Podcast today, and... I don't have a new name for it yet, so we'll call it a podcast anyway. Uh, the Acquia podcast is where we talk about, generally, Drupal community technology and business. I am very pleased to have a guest with me today on this new video podcast that we're doing on Google Hangouts, Michelangelo Van Damme, a Hi prominent there. figure in the PHP community. He and I met last year at a PHP conference in Poland, and I'm really excited to be talking with him today about the history of PHP, PHP's use in the enterprise today, and the new and exciting ways that Drupal is really interacting with up-to-date and modern PHP and more of the mainstream of the PHP community that it has in a long time. So, Michelangelo, why don't you introduce yourself, tell us just a little bit about who you are and what you do. Uh, well, um, my name is Michelangelo. I'm a PHP consultant, and I work with a lot of companies in Belgium, Netherlands, Luxembourg, but also with companies uh, abroad outside of uh, the European uh, Union. And I'm also involved with the uh, PHP Benelux uh, user community, where we uh, have monthly meetings, uh, have an annual conference, uh, do all sorts of uh, events like hackathons, bug hunt days, that, uh, that kind of stuff. Uh, and basically try to get people involved with PHP, be more uh, open with communities, get to know uh, local developers from their own area, and yeah, try to uh, share the knowledge. That's basically what I'm doing. Can you tell us what your first PHP or your first open source memory is? Well, my first open source memory um, goes back um, to the early days of uh, 1995. Um, I was working on uh, Windows 3.11 back then, and I discovered uh, OS2 Warp, which was from IBM. And um, yeah, from there, I started doing some uh, Java developments. Uh, back then it was not uh, open source yet. Um, and then all, all of a sudden in August uh, Windows 95 was released. So everyone was jumping on it and so did I. But after three months I gave up and I was like, no, this is not something that I want. Uh, so I looked for an alternative and there was a um, computer fair uh, in our area uh, where I got my first Linux box a uh, bunch of CDs, Slackware CDs, and try to install it and, and try to follow the readme files and installation guides. And after three months, I finally had my kernel working, and, and that was my first contact with open source. And I started looking at what was possible, learned about Perl, and developed a lot of things in Perl, uh, becoming more, as a sysadmin, um, where I was also working as uh, a sysadmin for, for a large in, um, internet company. And there they made a change saying, hey, we need to go from um, yeah, Perl to PHP. So yeah, I followed along and this is where I first met my PHP back in 2001. Can you compare the PHP of 12 years ago and the path it's taken to what it is today? Well, PHP has taken a uh, giant step uh, from being a procedural script CGI kind of language into a fully fledged open source object oriented um, programming language. Even though you don't compile it, it, I consider it a programming language. As you can build many applications consisting of uh, objects of uh, 
relations and all that stuff. Um, th I learned a lot more about computer engineering using PHP than I did ever with Perl or uh, working with Java. So um, the, the, the steps that I needed to take to fully grow alongside uh, PHP, they, those were massive steps, especially for me, because um, I'm a graduated accountant and never had a computer science degree. So, um, yeah, it, it was challenging. What should other people know about PHP now? Well, um, I, I don't want to brag, but PHP has been yeah, the most popular language on the internet uh, for so many years. And I think uh, looking at big companies like Microsoft, that uh, they invest a lot of time and effort in PHP um, to, to have their applications work nicely with uh, PHP. Um, is for us a signal that PHP is something that's going to stay and is going to last uh, at least a couple of decades before something else comes along and, and takes it away. So From the Drupal yeah. perspective, I thought that um, Microsoft making sure that PHP and PHP-based applications run on Azure, that run on the IIS servers, I really took that as a sign that um, on the one hand, Microsoft can see the progression and the, you know, how much the open source world is taking over um, in the business world. And at the same time, I think as open source business people, someone like Microsoft stepping in and supporting us so, so yeah. seriously gives us so many more opportunities. You know, it really broadens our horizons to, to, to work with more places, more people. Well, the, the thing is, is that... Um... With Microsoft uh, and other companies uh, participating in the open source uh, philosophy means that, uh, yeah, you get better uh, results, better, uh, um, yeah, better goals to achieve. Um, for instance, I remember back in the day when when uh, uh, Microsoft uh, was shouting, "Well, Linux uh, on open source, uh, that's toys, that's." That's something for my nephew to play with, but you cannot take it seriously. Um, that mentality has long gone, even though uh, some people in the open source community still look at these companies as being the bad evil. Uh, but in the end, we all want to make a, a better world for everyone, and even if it's proprietary software or open source software, uh, by joining forces, you can achieve higher goals then you can only do within your own little circle. And that philosophy is something that I really uh, like and, and really appreciate from um, all these uh, proprietary companies and also from the, the, the open source community members that are saying, hey, let's do this, let's, let's work together on this. So You wrote a great blog post for Acquia.com about PHP in the enterprise, and you called PHP the Swiss army knife of the web. Do you want to talk about that, that role that PHP is playing? Well, PHP, PHP has been designed for the web. So uh, if you want to do something simply for the web, you can use PHP. If you want to do something complicated for the web, you can still use PHP. Uh, PHP uh, can fit as, as glue between um, backends like AS uh, SAP or uh, Microsoft or uh, IBM Redfair. It doesn't really matter what kind of technology is on your backend. You, you want to communicate with your backend also to the front end, put some PHP in between, and everything it seems to work magically. It's not mm -hmm. magic because it's... it's, it's uh, high engineering done within the PHP core, but at least now we have those hooks that we can use to connect to that uh, backend system and use that data that's inside there and bring it to the, 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 the internet and bring it to the people in their homes, on their mobile phones. Uh, we provide simplistic uh, ways to build high and fast APIs. Um, yeah, what's not to love about that? I like the quote. I like the quote. It's not magic. It's PHP. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. 
Reading your biography, I know that you are something of an expert with the Zend framework. Yes. Uh, and also reading the article that you wrote for Acquia.com, PHP went through a long period of trying out different solutions, different approaches to things, and coming to uh, some best practices really by just field testing over uh, many, many years and yeah. many, many projects. Um, the two most prominent frameworks now uh, are Zend and Symfony, and there's a lot of convergence going on. I think the continuation of this pattern is the, the convergence in the PHP community, for example, how the composer allows Zend and Symfony components to work together. Um, can you talk about convergence in PHP, where PHP is going, and how the different streams are, are coming together even more today? Well, there is this uh, PHP standards group um, uh, operational, and it tries to um, bring all the community members and project leaders of these open source projects together in what I call a group of people where they can um, think about, hey, how can we build our applications so they're open to other applications. For instance, Symfony has great features uh, to be used on a single stack, but from time to time you need an external library. For instance, if you want to connect to Amazon or to uh, Windows Azure or something else like uh, Doctrine or something, you need to be able to plug it in into your um, framework that you're using. And in the early days, everyone was doing things their own way and there was not what we call now interoperability. Um, so this the, the, the foundation of this group was basically to f have this interoperability between all the PHP projects. So you can now have a Symfony stack or a uh, uh, Zen framework stack and oh, that other project has something that I want and I can pull it in either through Composer or to uh, just taking uh, bits and pieces of that library it doesn't really matter. You can just pull it in and and and, and use it um, without having to collect everything else from that uh, particular stack that you want to implement. What benefit does Drupal get from integrating with the Symfony component in the upcoming Drupal 8 version? Um, and what do you think? Where do you think the relationship with the mainstream PHP community could go with Drupal. How do, how do we as a Drupal community benefit from all of that? Well, um, Drupal is very great at doing something magnificent. That is building a CMS system and even more than just CMS. But all the principles are based on things that are already being created, like for instance having a connection to a database, having connection to a mail server, a file system, all that stuff is already being rewritten in so many libraries and frameworks. So why does Drupal need to do this all over again? This is the and not invented here syndrome. Everyone is doing the same thing in their own way. By eliminating that underlying stack saying, hey, we have Drupal on top and we have uh, Symfony on the bottom. Symfony does what Symfony does best, being the abstraction layer to all the most common uh, functionalities. And Drupal, on top of things, is very good at being a CMS. So when the focus it becomes pointed and narrow-minded in the sense that, hey, let's focus on what we do best, you can achieve higher goals and better quality as well. I've been talking with Larry Garfield on and off this year, and he coined a term with a blog post early on called getting off the island. So a lot of people mm -hmm. in Drupal core development, a lot of conferences have been focusing on this idea of getting off the island, um, which means, you know, actually the Drupal technology for a while was there were some really idiosyncratic parts, there was some wheel reinvention that went on, and now um, you know, adopting the Symfony components and um, you know getting back in line with mainstream PHP is is a real focus all of a sudden in the community. And Larry's really campaigning for people to open their eyes to all sorts of other things, uh -huh. not just mainstream PHP. Yes, because for every component that you write yourself, 
uh, it's not just that you need to create that functionality, but you also have to maintain that functionality, which means that you have to put effort in fixing uh, issues or bugs, uh, but also uh, have to make sure that everything is secure, especially nowadays when everyone is uh, open to the internet. Um, so by f narrow narrowing your focus, um, it's easier to maintain, it's easier to, to uh, secure, and knowing that uh, there is a complete uh, community uh, working on Symfony means that the Symfony stack will be maintained and secured and updated uh, so you don't have to put a additional effort in that. And like you say, uh, getting off the island, yes, it doesn't hurt to look around what's available already on the internet. Sometimes you, uh, when you see a project, um, maybe it covers already 60 to 80 percent of all your needs. And what you need to maintain is only the, the 40 to 20 percent additional development that you do yourself. The funny thing about this conversation to me is that it parallels almost perfectly exactly the conversations that we have with clients when we're talking about going mm -hmm. with Drupal in their enterprise. You know, center on a single technology that's backed up by a big community so that you can concentrate on your core business and that, exactly. you know, thousands and thousands of other eyes are, are, are helping you with your security, are, are helping you fix bugs. You know, all of these multipliers yeah. actually apply to the Drupal community. Uh, and its relationship to PHP, but I don't think that everyone's been cognizant of this so much until until recently. Well, maybe because everyone had their pride and, and, and had their, hey, I want to achieve this in, in my lifetime uh, kind of thing. But I think history already has proven that uh, uh, you cannot fight a war by yourself. You need to be in, in teams, and you have to have special... These, uh, amongst that, you need to have people on the ground. You need people on the air, on the sea, etc., etc. And that's the same thing when when it work goes with uh, development. Um, you are best at what you do on a daily basis. If you need to learn how to do something else that another company or another project does better, uh, it will take you time. It will take you uh, trial and error. The whole process that that other team already went through. Uh, so why not use their expertise and implement it in, in inside your own uh, application and maybe have a good open communication line so that it allows you to simply integrate uh, those those ideas those uh, projects. Sure, and it also it's also a matter of living the open source values that that we yeah. say we govern our project by. So I think everybody wins in the end. Yes, yes, exactly. Uh, by working together, there is no I in team, and and this uh, um, is true within companies, but also within communities. Right, and uh, so the watchword for today, today, what was it? Uh, it's not magic; it's PHP. Yes, <laughs> yes, exactly. Remember that. Okay, Michelangelo Fandam, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me today. Well, thank you for having me, and uh, maybe we'll see each other on somewhere on this planet. I'm sure we will. I'm sure we will. Take care. All right. Bye-bye.